when I first got to California, it was like, uh, it was a different place, a whole different place. Man, I was scared to get on the street because I'd get lost, you know, with all these uh, traffic lights and different streets. Because back home in American Samoa, there's only one road. Samoa's uh, migrate to the States for a better education, better living, better way of life, more or less. Um, trying to provide better than what they uh, can in Samoa. Uh, my parents decided to take me up there, I guess, to get a better education. Coming from the rock, I was like, damn, you know? America, you know? I was like, America, you know, this is America, you know? And I was, I was afraid of most, of most of the things. Cars were moving too fast, and the kids were speaking this weird language, and cousins making fun of me, you know? Oh, you just got off the boat, you know? Wanted to come back home. Went to school, met some cousins up there. And I, I, that's how I got up in the States. I was the only uh, Samoan there, and it was dark enough to be picked on. It's like you're trying to fit in, and uh, nobody knows you. That's what attracts you to doing the wrong things, so that you can fit in. And once you do those things, and they, they think you're part of, of them, of course, you feel the same way, too. How'd you get introduced to that show us? Family members, my cousins. Being from Samoa, I was like, yeah, I want to be part of them. You know, people, they, these guys are known, you know. They have the tags all over the place. I mean, you know, that SOS, SOS, 357, 408. I was like, man, I want to be part of them. And, if, you know, if I had to give up my body, you know, to get hurt to be part of them, I, I did what I had to do. I was hanging out at a park with uh, a couple of my cousins playing some ball, and uh, I guess uh, one of the neighbors called uh, the police on us. One of the police, uh, I guess he was uh, concerned about me, and um, he panicked. And I just put my hands up, and I told him, you know, I don't want to do nothing. I'm just trying to find out what's going on. So he uh, pulled out his uh, baton and uh, swung it at me because he didn't want to take a chance, you know. And um, from there on, um, I fought, tried to fight my way out, but he had a lot of backups. And that was uh, the first time I got in trouble. I raised him back home so he wouldn't get into his gang bang and call it. My dad, you know, he, he went to Samoa, came back, and he was on that big uh get to know your coach here, boy, you know. You know, because he wants to take us back, you know, with him. I wanted him to go back so he can learn the culture. See, and then when, in that way, when he comes back, then he, then he will realize how important to be a, a true Samoan. Whenever, whenever they can, they probably try to send them back here because in their minds, okay, this is where I was brought up and the system that I grew up with was a lot better. Okay, we all believe that, okay. Now, when you take them away from that, society there, okay, that put him here in a society where it's a little more, especially in the village uh, uh, setting, where everything is structured if you've got to do that or, the, you know, or you're out of the village, okay? That's why they send them back here to discipline them, put them in a different system. The system is entirely different from what they have. My parents, I gotta, I gotta give it to them. They were pretty good in um, conning me to come down here, you know, like, hey, uh, you know, Maybe you want to go back to visit your dad's family. Grandma's getting old, and everybody there misses you. Everybody want to see you. Goes, all right, you know, I'm, yeah, why not? 
go to Samoa, check out the rock, you know, see what I'm willing to die for in the States, you know, the island of Samoa. Came back here. Next thing you know, uh, Mom, um, summer's over. Can I go back now? They're like, oh, just wait till Christmas. Next thing you know, I'm on here forever, man.